Hello, Keith Rock here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, we're going to put together an odds and ends video this week. Uh, I've got stuff stacking up over here on the table again, but quite honestly, another big reason why we're doing odds and ends is I have had a pretty crazy week and just have not had time to get out here to do a whole lot in the shop. And what I have worked on in the shop, actually I've spent a fair amount of time out in the shop this week, but it's been doing odds and ends. <laughs> And, and, and stuff that's really, for the most part, not video worthy, uh, just doing some shop maintenance and uh, little, little, little jobs that have come up and that need to be done. Uh, and also working on getting my LeBlanc lathe ready to ship out. I'll show you a little bit of information on that here in just a minute. We did sell it, by the way. Uh, I still got it in the shop, waiting to get it shipped out. Uh, but uh, anyway, we got that taken care of. In fact, let's just start with that. Let me show you, let me show you a little bit on the LeBlanc lathe. Well, those that follow my channel regularly will recognize this spot right here, but you will recognize too that this spot is empty. Uh, and there used to, this is where my LeBlanc lathe has been sitting for quite some time. And uh, it's gone, it's, it's out of here. Uh, still in the shop, but not sitting here. So uh, we did sell that. A gentleman out in Colorado actually purchased the lathe and uh, I'm in the process of getting some shipping arrangements taken care of uh, for that. Uh, we are gonna have to ship it out there, which is a little bit scary to me. Uh, I, you know, I'm just a little bit nervous about shipping a, uh, a machine that far, but I'm, hopefully everything's gonna be all right with that. But uh, let me show you what we've done with the lathe uh, to get it ready for shipping. I've tried to do everything I can uh, to make sure that we have a successful shipment. So here she is. I got it mounted on skids uh, where hopefully we can get up in the truck all right. And uh, I did build a frame around this thing um, and to protect it. And I've still got a little bit of plywood I got to get on here. I've been using up some scrap plywood that I had laying around the shop and I've run out. I'm gonna have to go buy a couple more sheets to uh, finish closing this thing up, to put a top on it and a couple of these holes. Uh, and I purposely left some of these off so that I can strap this down because I'm going to have to haul it on a uh, trailer uh, that I need to strap it down on. So uh, anyway, I, I'm, I'm fairly confident that this is going to be all right. Uh, I've got the base out a little bit wider, so it's got a little bit wider footprint than the lathe normally has. Hopefully that will keep it from tipping over or anything in shipment uh, because if it's put on the back of a semi truck, it may or may not get strapped down. Uh, that's just the bottom line, and and uh, just want to play it safe there. Uh, I've got some boxes built down here up underneath the bottom. Those have uh, the chucks and some all the accessories. There's actually two boxes built into this whole crate, and I purposely blocked everything up so that uh, I've got wood basically coming up to the bottom of this pan, and I just I'm again, anticipating what might happen in shipping. If they come in there with some forks and the forks are a little bit long and hit those pieces of wood down there and there's nothing to support it and you're trying to pick the weight up, it could knock those, those boards up. So hopefully by, by blocking everything, making it solid all the way up to the chip pan, which is pretty thick by the way, uh, you know, it will hopefully at least give it enough support where the bottoms won't give out on it. But anyway, I, I, I'm, I'm confident, fairly, fairly confident that it's gonna be all right being shipped, but I am a little bit nervous about it nonetheless. Uh, I did figure out where the center of gravity is. I marked it on here so they come in from the side to pick this thing up. Uh, it doesn't need to be in the very middle because obviously the headstock end is heavier. So hopefully the forklift driver will do that. And I, I figured that out simply by taking my pallet jack and coming over here and picking up in different places until I got it where it was balanced, where it picked both sides up evenly. And you know, it's probably, it's probably within an inch or two, inch, an inch anyway, of being uh, right dead nuts and where it needs to be on center gravity. I got it marked on both sides. Uh, it'll probably get forked from the ends because uh, they're gonna probably have to stick it on the truck long ways. And uh, we'll see how that goes. I was actually planning on getting this taken out to uh, a place that I was going to actually ship it from that has forklifts and stuff uh, today. And I brought the, my tractor that I use occasionally that has a, a bucket and forks on it. It's actually with the same tractor that I used to unload this lathe with, but it wouldn't pick it up. So I'm going to probably have to rent a forklift to get this thing loaded up on this end. 
I think that uh, just the added weight of the chucks and the accessories, as well as the, the fairly substantial crate that I built, just caused the weight to go over a little bit more than what that tractor will pick up. And that tractor is only, it's limited on what it's gonna do. But anyway, I thought I'd show you this, guys. Uh, it's, it's on its way out of here. And I am also expecting here, hopefully in the next week or two, we're going to be getting a new machine to go in that spot. And I think I mentioned that before. I'm not going to, I'm not going to spoil it yet. Uh, some people were saying, oh, the, the, the sander that I got, that was, that was the, what was going over there. Now, the sander was just kind of a, a bonus buy that I was able to pick up. I've actually got a machine coming in there I'm really excited about. Hopefully you guys will be too, but I'm not going to tell you what it is until it gets here. All right, over here to the stuff that's coming in the shop. And uh, first item here, these are some, I forget what the real name of them are, but this is basically calibrated standards for doing different size bores. So this would be used in a production setup where you were needing something to actually check a, a bore with and with uh, some type of internal uh, measuring device, probably a bore gauge or something like that. And these came from Nilts Lima. Nilts actually was down here a couple of weeks ago helping with his electrical work. And this is an item that he brought down, some stuff that he'd picked up. Thought I might be able to use them for something. And uh, they are stamped. They're all actually different sizes. And uh, they're stamped with what that measurement is. And they're fairly accurate, down to about a half a thou uh, on, on these. But um, I probably won't use them as standards as far as... Uh, measuring because I probably won't ever have something that exact diameter that I need to measure with, but ideas here, maybe we can use these salvage them and use them for something else. If nothing else, I can grind these things the same height they may already be and use them as a spacers or something like that, uh, but we'll, we'll see what we can do with them. But anyway, Nils brought those down and I appreciate Nils coming and helping out with my electrical work and I appreciate these little standards here. Uh, we'll find something to do with them. Next item here comes from Kevin Lafferty. Kevin sent this down. This is actually a pretty cool little item. Uh, I've actually got a couple of these and I've showed these before, but these, this is an old school uh, ruler for all intent and purposes. It folded up uh, like such and it's a foot long. It's, it's boxwood and brass. Um, these are actually, there's some guys that collect these. This one actually is a hook ruler. It's got a hook on the end, which is kind of cool. I don't think I've got one like that. It, uh, see, it's, it's not marked with a maker that I can find. It is marked, it says number 32 and a half. I, I suspect that this was probably made by Stanley. I, I got a book that has a, a bunch of Stanley tools in it, and I need to take this in and look it up and see if the 32 and a half matches this. Uh, it m could possibly be a different maker. But anyway, uh, Kevin sent this along. He said it actually belonged to his grandfather, it was in some tools that he had, and he was cleaning some stuff out, and uh, thought he'd send it along to me. So anyway, I very much appreciate it. This is, this is pretty cool. I, I really like these, uh, these little uh, fold-up rulers like this. They're, they're, just, they're just cool to me. So I was just looking at this off camera, and uh, I said it was a hook rule, and it can be used as a hook rule, but this is actually a little, uh, it's kind of like a little uh, caliper. So you can put that on there and measure something to here and read it off. Uh, there, this, it's kind of worn, but there's a scale that goes up to about three inches right here. So, you know, obviously this is not for measuring to a thousandth of an inch, but uh, it would easily measure to 16th or 32nd of an inch, which are the lines that are on there. So more probably woodworking uh, calibrated more than machinists, but still cool nonetheless. I don't think I've got one with the built-in caliper like that. That's neat. So next item here, we have a book, and uh, this was sent in by Al Shapira up in New Jersey. And kind of interesting, last year Al sent me uh, part two to this book, Machine Tool Operation, said he went to a book sale and found the part two and thought it was interesting, thought I would enjoy it, and uh, it was probably pretty cheap, so he picked it up and put it in the mail to me. Well, they have an annual book sale at this particular place he went to, and he went back to it this year, 
And lo and behold, he found part one <laughs> to the two-part set this year. So he bought the, the matching part uh, one and sent that to me as well. So anyway, pretty cool book. Uh, machine tool operation, lathe, bench, and forge work. So you got uh, lathe work in here. You got bench tools and blacksmithing forge work. So anyway, pretty cool book. Very much appreciated. Thank you, Al. So next items here, this is kind of interesting. This is uh, sent in by Connor Smith. And Connor, um, I've been watching some of his stuff on Instagram and so forth, but he's got a vacuum forming machine where they can take this plastic and mold it into different shapes. And he's been working on some designs for some toolbox trays uh, to help organize tools and stuff. And uh, this, this is a couple of the designs that he's had got right here. He sent a couple of these me to try out. And you can see, you can like take a, you know, whatever and put them in here and, and it kind of just keeps things from moving around in your toolbox and kind of keeps things organized. So these are some designs that he had come up with. And I actually had shared an idea about something for storing some hand files. And let me take you over and show you those because he, I've already got those in my toolbox. And it was kind of a prototype, but let's, let's go take a quick look at those. So if you look here, it's kind of hard to see the black on black, but this is another little vacuum formed uh, tool tray thing that he came up with. And, and I actually had kind of shared an idea for this one. I've been looking for a good way to store my hand files, get them in a, a, a cabinet or a drawer where I can have them all in here laid out, but to keep them from banging up against one another. Uh, and getting dull and so forth. And uh, I, had, I had an idea and he kind of took my idea and came up with this, uh, this little tray here that uh, holds files. And uh, all in all, it, it works pretty good. Uh, I'm, I'm still kind of thinking in my mind how uh, we might modify that a little bit to make it a little bit more efficient. But uh, it actually works pretty good right there. Uh, I, I do have a suggestion or two that I'm gonna probably suggest back to him. Uh, but I, I really like this and, and again, I've, I've got over here in my tool cabinet a bunch of cabinets with, with files in them and I'm really wanting to get all these organized and sorted out where uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to, to, to be able to grab things, grab one and go. Which drawer was it? There we go. That's the one that has the organizers in it. But anyway, kind of a neat idea here. And uh, I've actually got a couple other ideas for some toolbox organization that hopefully going to be working with Connor on down the road to maybe come up with some more ideas. So if anybody's interested in getting up with Connor uh, about purchasing some of these or you got ideas or what have you, uh, I will share his email address right here, uh, or website rather, uh, his website's right here that you can go check that out. And I uh, contact them through that. So guys, I'm doing a little favor for a viewer that contacted me this past week. A gentleman down in Florida has a Monarch Model K lathe exactly like this one right here, 16 inch. He purchased it a while back. It had the tracing attachment on it. I'm not sure the status of that, but regardless, he's wanting to get it back to the original where you have a compound up here rather than a tracing attachment. His lathe does not have this piece right here. If anybody out there happens to have a compound off of a Monarch 16 inch Model K lathe or even something that he could make work, uh, shoot me an email. I've got my email address right down here below. I will connect you guys together. And again, I'm just trying to help out a guy who is uh, looking for a part to get his machine up and running. Along those same lines of trying to help out a uh, fellow friend trying to get a machine back up and going. I've got another friend of mine, Andy Knowlton. Andy's actually maybe seen him in some of my older videos. He used to live here in town and help me out some. Still lives in the area, but he's about an hour away now. He moved a couple of years ago. But uh, Andy recently picked up a Wells Index 747 mill machine, very similar to this one right here. This one's an 847, his is a 747. Uh, very, very similar machines. He got it and uh, was having some problems with the spindle on it, started tearing into it. And lo and behold, the, the actual spindle that comes through this thing uh, has the collet and the bearings attached to it. It goes up, the drawbar goes down through the center. Somehow or another, I have no idea how this happened, but the spindle is actually broken. It had snapped in half up there at the top. 
I got some pictures here I'll show you. Um, and anyway, Andy is trying to find another spindle for the, his Wells Index. So if somebody's got an old Wells Index mill again, you're scrapping it out, something like that, uh, he's looking for a spindle. He can buy a brand new one from Wells Index, but that part's about $1,500, which is more than what he paid for the whole mill. And uh, he really doesn't want to go down that road. If he's not able to find one, uh, we actually have come up with an idea of how we might be able to repair uh, his existing spindle. But first things first, you know, let's see if anybody has one that they'd be willing to, to part with. So if you got a spindle off of one of these, again, shoot me an email. I'll hook you up with Andy. I'll let you guys work out the deal. But uh, he is looking for a spindle for a Wells Index 747 mill machine head. All right, next items here. We got some pretty nice little tools that was sent in by Joel Havens. Joel is a longtime friend of mine, actually helps out a lot over on the vintagemachinery.org website, helping uh, with a lot of the behind the scenes stuff to get updates done, uh, doing historical research on companies, scanning catalogs, all kinds of stuff. But Joel uh, goes around to a lot of swap meets and stuff every year. He's picked up a bunch of tools over the years. And anyway, he had some stuff he wanted to send me and he sent me a list of some stuff and I kind of went through it and told him things that I could, could use. And uh, anyway, he sent some items along to me uh, from just his inventory, I guess you could say. And uh, first thing here, this is a uh, thread uh, caliper. So you basically would put like up on a bolt down here as you actually has the threads and you got a 60 degree profile here you can measure across them. I've got a couple of these, but I don't have one in this size. This one is a one to two inch. I think all the ones I have are zero to one. And uh, these come in, they're different anvils down here on the bottom for different thread pitches. This one here is eight to 13 threads per inch is what it will properly measure. And this one is a Slocum um, out of, what is that, Galstonbury, Connecticut looks like. So anyway, nice little tool there. So this next one is a Starrett, uh, what is that, a 210A. And at first thought, you might think it is a thread pitch gauge as well. It's got on both sides, but you should have a different anvil down on the bottom. This is actually for measuring if you got to get into something where you just need to get into a tight point. So if you got like a, something in a recess you need to get down into, um, where it's too wide with a regular micrometer to the full pad. So anyway, it's a pretty handy little tool. I don't have one of these, kind of a specialty item, uh, but anyway, a, a very nice addition. And I'm sure this is something that you're uh, going to have a need for at some point in time. Next here, we have a Starrett uh, number 823C inside micrometer set. And uh, I've got an inside mic set, but what's neat about this one is this one is for doing larger diameters. I think the one I have goes up to 12 inches, or maybe not, maybe it's six inches, I can't remember. Uh, but regardless, this one here goes from four inches to 24 inches, and I think you can actually screw these sections together to get longer measurements inside uh, measurements. So uh, again, for doing the inside measurements. Uh, I had one, I think, up to 12 inches. This one goes up to 24. So another real nice uh, addition. And the last one here is a Mitsutoyo three flute micrometer. I've actually got another three flute micrometer that uh, was sent down a while back, but it's a different size. So this one here uh, is for measuring if you, if you got something that has three points on there. For example, if you have a a uh, say an, an, an end mill, a three three flute end mill, or a three fl three flute tool, or something that only has three points of contact, and you want to measure the diameter across those three points, you can use this uh, this tool right here to do this. So, uh, if you don't have a point directly across from it, like you would use a regular micrometer, if you got three three points anyway, this is the tool you use. And uh, this is something else that comes in handy. It's a little bit of an unusual tool. And uh, they made these in a couple of different variations for different, uh, different type setups. But anyway, another nice little tool to add to the shop. And finally, there's just a number four to number five Morse taper adapter. And uh, I got the number five Morse taper over on my 
Carlton radio drill, and uh, these come in real handy because I got a lot of number four tooling, and I need to sleeve them to be able to go between the two. So another nice little addition to the shop. Thank you, Joel, for sending those in. So this next item was sent in by Dave Wentz, a longtime friend of mine, does a lot of locomotive restoration work. Uh, we've collaborated on a couple of things. He's been down here a time or two uh, visiting and so forth, but uh, he, uh, he sent these along. I've come across them somewhere and figured I might be able to find a good home for them. I actually don't have the tool that this fits on, so if anybody has a need for these or has this tool, uh, shoot me an email and, uh, you know, maybe we can work out a trade or something. I don't know. Uh, but this, these are chaser dies uh, that go into, it says, uh, uh, Namco, what is that, Versatool. So I think this is made by Cleveland Tap and Die or Cleveland, Cleveland whatever, um, Cleveland Twist Drill maybe. I can't quite, cry. I think it's Cleveland Twist Drill Company. But uh, again, this would go on a, a, some type of die. And this is kind of neat. This is circular around and you could just grind this to sharpen it and just kind of keep turning these to, to keep using these. And, and these dies are, it says inch and five eighths. Um, well, it says inch and five eighths there and it says 13 16, uh, 13 16 by 16 NS is I guess the, the thread size. So again, if somebody has the tool that these fits to and can use these, shoot me an email and we'll see if we can work something out. Sometime back, guys, I shared that I'd picked up an eBay find this uh, Norton Multi-Stones. This is a three-sided sharpening stone system that you could just rotate, had different stones on here, different grits for doing sharpening and so forth. And um, I, I wanted to share, just kind of give you an update on it. This is going to be a restoration project coming up hopefully soon. Uh, but the, the stones that were on it, they, they were in decent shape, but they were, you know, like most sharpening stones, they kind of get bellied out or what have you. So my buddy Lance Baltzy down in Florida, Lance of course does the precision ground bench stones that I've shared. Uh, I was telling him about this and he said, hey, bring those stones down to me. He wanted to grind them for me. So uh, I was down in Florida a couple of weeks ago, dropped these off. I was back down in Florida. Uh, I go down to the Gainesville area fairly regularly for work. And uh, anyway, I stopped in and he had reground these for me. So these have all been now precision ground. I'm not really planning on using these as precision ground stones per se, but what I do have now are nice, flat, freshened stones. So these stones have basically been restored to go back into the rest of this uh, once it's all been restored. So anyway, I was pretty happy to get that done. And uh, while he was there, I also brought these down. So these are just, again, some, some uh, round bench stones. This has got two grits on them. And uh, I've had this set for a while. I think Dale Derry actually uh, left these at my shop or gave them to me. He was here doing a project one time and had these and left them. And uh, they were in pretty rough shape. They, uh, they were filthy nasty. I'd used them a lot and uh, Dale had used them a lot before. They got some dings and some nicks on them or whatever. But uh, again, Lance took these and turned this into a precision ground set. So this has actually been precision ground and I will use them as precision ground stones on different things. And wow, these things are awesome. He uh, put them in his ultrasonic cleaner, got them cleaned up real good, reground them or ground them flat. And these things are just this awesome now. Uh, yeah, they got a couple of nicks, but on the outside, but they, they, they're almost, they're almost brand new, uh, at least as far as the surfaces go. So I'm real happy to have those. I think Lance is actually, um, offering these round stones for sale, uh, as well as, as the, the, the flat stones, uh, regular, regular bench stones. So if anybody's interested, of course you can contact Lance, uh, 26 acre .com. It's his website and he sells the precision ground flat stones and uh, all kinds of other things. And if you've got similar work like this that you wanna have him do, he's set up to do that, uh, to, to grind these, these stones. So, and uh, he will talk to you about doing a custom job. Uh, if you got something like, just like this, that you need a, a stone freshened up or something like that. So last item here, this is actually in, in in my opinion, one of the coolest things here, but Daniel Seamwell up in Connecticut sent me 
three bound copies of magazines. These are uh, machinery magazine, 1909 to 1910, 1911, 1912, 1910, 1911. So volume 16, 17, and 18. These were, came out of an old library. I've actually got some other bound uh, magazines from this time era on some woodworking machinery. In fact, it's called The Woodworker is the, the publication, but these things are awesome, man. They are full of so much really cool old machinery information. It, this talks about machine shop practice, how things were done back in the day. Uh, there's sections in these magazines on, you know, when people are, bringing a new machine or something to uh, in, into that they're selling. It's got, you know, information on, on these things, uh, new innovations in machinery. You know, here's a, um, a LeBlanc heavy machine lathe, <laughs> very similar to the one I've uh, just sold. So this is an old flat belt version. You know, here's a universal horizontal boring machine. Man, I'd love to have one about that size. Man, that would be awesome. Look at that, man. <laughs> I'd love to have that, that'd be cool. There's an old Camelback drill press. So lots of just really cool, neat information in these things. And uh, this is the kind of stuff that I like to get scanned and put up on my website uh, when we have time. Unfortunately, in these uh, library copies, they usually, uh, the, the front section of these things and the back section was full of advertisements for all kinds of machinery companies and related stuff and they usually, removed all the ads and only only put the the you know the actual meat of the of the of the publication in these in these bound copies but for the research that i do on, on the vintage machinery website sometimes those, those advertisements are real valuable to be able to figure out when things were introduced and when things were available but nonetheless still pretty cool very very cool look at there's an old looks like a that's the right Bright flying machine, so the Wright brothers got some stuff in here. This is 1909. That's about the time all that was going on. So, just really cool stuff. And uh, anyway, I'm really excited about these. I'm, I'm looking forward to to looking through these and reading them. There's just there's, it's just a wealth of information in them. And again, hopefully we can get some of this scanned and put up on the website as well. All right, guys, that's going to be a wrap. Uh, as always, thanks for watching these uh, videos, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave us comments if you like. And uh, I got some projects we're going to be working on this weekend, so hopefully have some more machining content and stuff like that coming up for you guys very soon. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time around.